Hello friends. In the previous session, a uh, couple of sessions, what we have done is that we have done uh, lap winding for two pole four slot machine, two pole six slot machine, and then we did a uh, lap winding for a uh, four pole eight slot machine. Okay. Now, uh, some of the people have been asking me that uh, how to identify the parallel paths for all these things. So it is not clear from this diagram. That is true. But however, in my first session, uh, first or second session in which I started the lap pointing, I have explained how to find the parallel paths. But that is not the most effective way of finding the parallel paths. Okay. So for that, you have to have a different perspective of the diagram and not this particular diagram which you are seeing on the screen right now. So for that, we need a developed diagram to identify or to understand the equipment much more better. Uh, DC machine much more better. Now, I am not telling that this is a DC generator or a DC motor because the windings are same. You can use it as a DC motor or a DC generator. You can note that I have not identified the brushes here. That is for a particular reason because the brush placement is another very important topic in the DC machine. Okay. So, uh, before starting all these things, now let us take a very crude example here. Okay. Now, you all know donuts, right? We all eat them. You all enjoy them. So, for example, this is a donut. Okay. So this is a donut, okay? Bad looking donut, but still it's a donut, okay? Now, <clears throat> let me keep a point here. It could be a design. I'm just keeping a point here, all right? And let me just spread out some nice, maybe cream or something like that, okay? So this is my donut. So this is a donut. This is a donut. Now, for example, I'm going to take a piece from it and let us assume that this donut is going to stretch out like a uh, rubber. It is having that property of stretching out. Usually the donut will break, but let us assume that I can stretch it out. So let me just take a piece from this area. Let me put it in a different color. Yeah. So I will take it. I'll just cut one piece from here. Okay, so I'll cut a piece from here. So after cutting what it will look like, it will become something like this, right? It becomes something like this. Okay. Now what I am going to do, I have made a cut here. I am going to expand it from both sides like this. I am going to develop it from both sides. So what do you get? You get a donut which looks like this now. Okay. You get a donut which looks like this. And uh, the red dot, will, because it's going to come here, because the donut is going to expand here, the red dot will be here, somewhere like this. Okay. And then you are having your filling like this, something like this. So basically, this is the developed diagram of the donut. This is the developed diagram of the donut. And this is the same thing which we are going to do to our DC machine. All right. So let me just paste that uh, DC machine thing here. I've already taken it out. So yeah. So this is the DC machine that we have in our hand now. So this is a DC machine. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make a cut here. See, I'm going to make a cut here. Okay. And I'm going to expand it from both sides like this. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So let's see what we will get now. So this one three dash will come to the end. Then you'll get two two dash and then three it will come like this. So basically what you are going to get is that you will get some slots like this. Two. Three. And four. You'll get four slots like this. And because one is here, like this here, one is here. So this first slot will have the first conductor. So one and three dash will be here. And then you will have two. And then you will have four dash. And then you'll have three. And you will have one dash. And then you will have two dash. And then you will have four. So this is what you go what you're going to get if you develop the diagram. But however, this is also not very informative to us because we cannot see the connections from here. Okay, you cannot see the connection between one and one dash, which is the bottom connection. So now I am, I think you are able to understand why the connection between one and one dash was the bottom connection because that is already there in the uh, winding structure. Because see, <clears throat> it is something like this, right? One and one dash. So this connection will be the bottom connection from the behind. Okay, now. With this, what we can do to make this diagram more clear? So what we can do is that we can view it from above. Okay, we can view it from above. So what you are going to see is that 
when you view it from above see this is the conductors right these are the conductors and this is the bottom conductor this is top conductor bottom conductor top conductor and bottom conductor so you are going to see some straight lines when you see from above okay you are going to see some straight lines so let us just draw it here so first you are going to see one okay you cannot see four dash because sorry you cannot see three dash here because three dash is in three dash is below one okay so you cannot see three dash so what you can do is that you can just put it by a dotted line so this is one and this is three dash and next you can see two okay and that bottom conductor is four dash see two bottom conductor is four dash and then you can see three and the bottom conductor is one dash okay and then you can see uh, finally you can see four and the bottom conductor is two dash so here small mistake is here this is four and this is two dash so you can see something like this now to get more clarity you can see that one and two that means the slots number one and two and the conductors number one and two are under the north pole so i can just put something like this here and show that this is in the north pole you can put something like this here and show that this is in the south pole now we can draw connections and we can identify what is the lap winding here okay so let's just draw the connections now so let me just take this as a reference just copy this So I am taking this diagram as a reference only and let us draw the neat diagram. Okay. Now, yeah. So under the first slot we had 1 and 3 dash, right? So this is the first slot. If you want you can show something. So I am not going to name the slots because it, the draw, diagram becomes very cluttered. But understand that 1 and 3 dash and are under the same slot. So let me call this 1 and this is 3 dash. And then you are having 2 and uh, 4 dash. Then you are having 3 and you are having 1 dash. And uh, finally you are having 4 and you are having 2 dash. Okay. And uh, another thing is that these are coming under the north pole and these two are coming under the south pole okay so that give us the connections now one and one dash are connected because they are part of the same coil which is coil number one so let us draw join that okay and because this is a bottom connection i'm going to put it like this okay see the windings are actually made construction itself they are made so that it follows that geometric pattern so one and one dash are connected now in the lap winding the end of the first coil is connected to the start of the uh, second coil right so one dash will get connected to two so one dash is going to get connected to two like this okay one dash is going to get connected to two and then two will get connected to two dash because that is part of the same coil okay and two dash is connected to three two dash is connected to three like this okay and three is connected to three dash because they are part of the same coil so let me just put this is going to 3 dash <coughs> and here it is coming from 3 okay and then 3 dash is connected to 4 so let me just put it here this is going to 4 and uh, this is coming from 3 dash this is just to identify which is coming from where and which is going to where and finally 4 dash is 4 is connected to 4 dash 4 is connected to 4 dash where is 4 dash yeah 4 dash is here so 4 is connected to 4 dash okay and finally the winding is closing when it is getting connected to 1 so this is the final connection here something like this okay now i have not shown any commutators here but you know that the commutators are going to be the important part of the do do it. the commutator does the important part of joining the two windings okay so let us do that also here so let me just take these connections here so these are the commutators okay four commutators are there so one and uh, <coughs> one dash 
1 and 4 dash are here so let me just mark the commutators here so 1 and 4 dash are connected to commutator a 2 and uh, 1 dash see this is 2 right 2 and see this connection here look at this connection here 2 and 1 dash were connected to commutator b and 3 and 2 dash were connected to commutator c and 4 and <coughs> 3 dash were connected to commutator number d this is how we have done the connection Okay, so this is the developed diagram now. This is a much more better understanding of the lap winding. Okay, now, now the question comes where to keep the brushes now. Now let us assume that, say this is a generator. So everything under the north pole will have the current in the same direction and everything under the south pole will have the current in the uh, same direction. Okay, so for example, north, uh, for example, uh, you can un understand this by this armature is going to move. These windings are going to move. They can move in this direction or they can move in this direction. Okay. And the commutators are also going to move. The north and south are going to be the stationary. So we have taken a three-dimensional diagram and we had put it into a two-dimensional diagram. So you have to remember that these conductors are going to move. Now you see one, three dash, two, four dash are under the north pole. Now if the conductor is going to move like this, conductors are going to move like this, after some time, two dash and four will come somewhere in between north and south after some time 2 dash and 4 dash will come under the uh, south pole so every conductor is going to see every pole okay so for the time being let us assume that any conductors on the north pole in a particular direction have an upward facing emf so everything is having an upward and everything is having here a downward okay you can see that how the emfs are adding up so emf here e plus the next e like this here second e and the third e and the fourth e. that is how these emfs gets added up now where do you keep the brushes you keep the brushes where you are having the same emf type okay for example here at this particular commutator you can see that both are facing the upward direction whereas here you don't want the commutator to take any emf because you want the connection to move like this one dash to two there should be no interruption it should be a direct connection like this through the commutator it should not leak away from the commutator okay so you don't keep any brush here, you keep one brush here, okay. And the next one here is C, where you are having both in the downward direction. So you can now, now that we have seen the developed diagram, let us convert it into a circuit point, okay. Now I am assuming that this is a motor, so I am going to send in current through the positive terminal, it gets, it splits into two and then it comes out of this particular uh, negative brush, okay. Now, to draw a circuit, what we are going to do is that, we are going to do two lines here okay so one will be my positive and one will be negative positive you are having one brush right so let me just put it here one brush which is positive now let us look at the conductors here so let me just take a different color pen so here the current is splitting into two okay so the first set is one one dash from there it goes to two two dash and then it comes and finishes its path here okay so let us take the first path here which is conductor number one one dash two and two dash which finally comes into a brush minus here so this is one one dash two and two dash okay now if you see the next path here the next path is this one four dash and from 4 dash the connection is coming to 4 okay and from there it is going to 3 dash and it is going to 3 and finally it is coming to the negative sign so here you are having the another path which has 4 conductors which are 4 dash 4 3 dash and 3 now see how many parallel paths are there here you are having two poles here and how many parallel paths are there? You are having two parallel paths. Therefore, if this current is IA, this current will be IA by 2 and this current would be IA by 2 and finally, you will get a current again here to be IA. Okay. In the next session, let us draw for a four-pole machine in which you will get four parallel paths. Okay. So, I hope this is clear. This lecture is clear. It might be a little bit confusing, but if you spend a little bit of time, you will have no difficulty in understanding and once you understand these concepts, it will never go out from your mind. Okay, so if you like this video, please share, like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.